This week has been huge when it comes to Airtable's updates for its project management features. Now, whether you've already been using Airtable, this is going to be a breath of fresh air of new features that you can work into your workflow, or if you've been holding off a little bit on moving to Airtable because you're looking for some more traditional project management features, I think you're going to really enjoy this. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we're an Airtable implementation partner. Now, first up, Airtable has released two new project management templates. I gotta be honest, I don't normally get too excited about templates in the no-code world because you're always tweaking them to make them your own, but in this case, it is a night and day experience compared to what Airtable used to have. When you signed up for Airtable for the first time and you were looking for project management templates, this is what you got. This was called the project tracker and there were some tasks and there were some projects and that was about it. Now we've got beautiful templates that are built on Airtable's interfaces. You can see they've got a nice little overview with this app directory here. This one they called project management. You can take a look and you can see we have my tasks, things that we're working on. You wanna see an overview of projects and tasks that the team is working on. We can see an overview of a schedule, which we have some Gantt functionality in here, Kanban roadmap. And then there's also insights that we can see about the projects that our team is working on. And then we can see an overview of our team. On the resource allocation one, it's a little bit similar in nature, but we can see some time off that our team is taking. We can get into the projects and look at those projects and tasks again. A big part of this is around scheduling and being able to see utilization. So we've got a really nice utilization view here. And then again, we've got another dashboard where we can see insights of what's going on. Now, the underlying data for these templates isn't that complex. You can see we've got people, projects, and tasks for this one interface, but it still looks so much better than what we had in the past and really showcases Airtable's new features. Now, many people have wondered through the years, why is there a separate timeline view and a Gantt view? Because it isn't really a Gantt, basically a timeline with some dependencies. And that's what the folks at Airtable were thinking as well. So now if you go ahead and click into a timeline that you have, there's a really simple setting where you can change the layout for this. So if you look under appearance, now you can toggle between stacked, which is the more traditional layout for timelines, and you've got your Gantt view. And you can just set this here so that you don't really have to worry about two different types of views. Next, let's talk about date dependencies. So when it came to the traditional Gantt view that you could create, you could configure how those dates worked with the predecessor tasks and you'd be able to have dates that move out when you're changing the predecessor task. But the confusing part is that if you had a grid view and you also had that Gantt view, and now you're operating in the grid view or someone's using a Kanban and they're changing a task for themselves, then it didn't change the dates. It would only happen if you had it in the Gantt view. So that's a little bit confusing. Why would come down to the view to be able to have those dependencies? And as such, we now have it at the table layer where we're actually making those changes. So here, if we look at our table of tasks, this is where we can click and say, we want to configure our date dependencies. And so we're doing it at the table level here. We've got our tasks. Here's where we define that predecessor field. And again, we cover this more in depth in a different video where we're going over Gantz, but the predecessor field is just a linked record field. And we're saying, hey, what are the tasks that come before the current task that we're on? And so that's where we define this in our configuration. Then of course we need to say, hey, what are the start date and the end date of this so that it knows how to shift those dates appropriately. And then we also have a duration and it's important when you configure this duration that it needs to be set to a precision of days. So we're not doing this by hours within a day. This needs to be days and not at a more macro level as well. And here we can omit weekends and holidays. You can toggle that on and off. And you can also add a list of specific days that you want to be excluded here. So when we save this, notice that we see this new little icon that displays next to the fields that we need, the start date, the end date, the duration. And so in this case, we have a predecessor task. This task number one comes before task number two. And so if we made a change, if we said, oh, you know what, we're working on this project and we actually need to bump this out until the 22nd that it's going to finish, notice how this is going to change the next task after it. So I'll change it to the 22nd and boom, immediately this updates. Now this starts on the 23rd because it was waiting on this previous task in order to complete. Now I will say it doesn't work the other way. So if you said, oh, hey guys, yeah, I told you the 22nd, but we actually got it done an extra day early. So go ahead and get started. It's not gonna then shift that back. So that's my only complaint there. But it's really exciting that now we're able to take these dependencies into consideration regardless of what view we're operating from. Now, any of you who are doing project management on a daily basis, you know how important utilization is. Now, Airtables have the ability to track utilization and have a view for this to be able to sum up the different tasks that are going on 
and what the holistic utilization looks like for those resources. But the problem was when it came to assigning resources, you'd have to toggle back and forth or have two different windows open to actually look at utilization as you're assigning resources which would be pretty cumbersome. Now we have a new feature to be able to preview the utilization before we actually assign the resource. So if I see this task and I know I need to resource it, I can open up the task here and here's where we can add this assignee. And this is where we see a preview of our different resources. And this is the new function we're talking about here. We can see that utilization. We can see what they're currently at. And then by assigning this task, what that would take them to. So these folks right now don't have anything going on. They go from zero to 30%. We can see Andre down here is already at 17% for this period of time. So adding this task to his plate is going to take him to 47%. So this is how we can keep a better eye on how we're utilizing our resources. Now to configure this, we're going to click on the field of assignee, and this is going to have this area for preview utilization. It's got a toggle that you can turn on or off if you want to show that. And then we have some settings for this as well. So make sure that you click into each of these. There's a gear icon where you set up the date settings, the different fields that we have, as well as the utilization settings. And this is going to be very similar to when you're actually configuring the utilization view itself. And in fact, they've added this really handy feature, which I'm really glad they were thinking ahead this way, which is to copy configuration from a view. So in this case, because we'd already set up the utilization view for projects, we can just say, yeah, I don't want to set this all up again. Let me just click on this. It's going to copy those configuration settings in so you don't have to do this manually by hand. I hope this was helpful to see the new project management features rolling out this week. If you have any questions about your own Airtable setup, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.